friends, welcome back. Today we're going to be making a pair of no so sucrose ears, just like the ones I'm wearing here, and I'm going to take you through the whole process. I'm wearing the sucrose cosplay that I unboxed in the first part of this series, so without further ado, let's get to it. So I ordered this wig off of Amazon around the same time that I bought the cosplay and it arrived in pretty good condition. It just has these weird darker bits where I think they wanted me to style out her ears from the wig, but I'm not about that. So we're just going to make our own. One of the first things I did was just pull out a bunch of my airbrush paints and I'm just going to go through and kind of hold them against it to see if I can color match what we've got going on in the wig. And I actually think I was able to get pretty close. There's some mixing that I'll have to do with these, but overall, I think this should be pretty straightforward. It's got some fluffy pink bits under her ears too that's kind of hard to see, so I grabbed some paint for that too. Sucrose's ears are actually pretty reasonably big, so if I think about the headband just over to this side, they kind of swoop up from there like this. So they scoop down and then go up a little bit at the end. So for the pattern, I basically need to cut out two paper pieces like this and then tape them together so I can test out the form of the ear. For this part, it's really important just to make sure that I scale everything correctly. So I'm going to take a couple seconds here and just test it up against my head and make sure that everything fits because otherwise this might scale really poorly. So yeah, the first step was just to cut out two of these pieces so I could test them out. Kind of a mock-up. Yeah, I honestly might just take the little little bit of this off, but we'll I'll bring it to a mirror. I'll bring it to a mirror and we'll see how we're doing. Hello. Excuse my unmakeup face. So, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> it's it's way too big, but that's okay. Um, so it's like back here a little bit. We're gonna take this down by I think about 30%, and then we'll be golden, I think. Okay. Yep, so too big as kind of expected. So I think what I'm gonna do, I think we're gonna take this down by about this much. Gosh, they could maybe even go smaller than that. Should be. So with the pattern squared away, I grabbed my scrap fur bag and just pulled out some pieces that I thought might fit this. Um, I've got some 2mm EVA foam in here as well. This is actually what we're going to use for the core of the ears, just because it's super flexible. And so I'm going to try and pick out fur that actually lays in the direction of her ears. Once I've got those sorted, I'm just going to take my pattern and trace it out on the back. Excuse my use of a Copic marker, I did switch to a Sharpie eventually. Once I traced out four of these, I just grabbed my razor and cut this from the back. With fur, it's most efficient just to do this instead of using scissors, because with scissors, you're actually going to cut the fibers of the fur. So once I had all four of those cut out, it was time to cut out the same shape from EVA foam, but this time I only needed two instead of four. For that though, I'm just kind of combing through the ears with my hands and making sure that the fur fibers are laying in the direction that I want and not going the opposite way. And yeah, all four of those look really good. So now I'm just taking my 2mm EVA foam and the same pattern as the ears and I just go through and cut these with scissors. Super quick, super easy, you don't really need anything fancy to do this. And I just checked to make sure the size was good and yep, we're good to go. Now it's time to get my wire and my wire cutter. So for the cores of these ears, we're actually going to bend this wire into the shape of the ear just so that they can be malleable and we can really move them around and do whatever we want. 
It does take a little bit of doing though. I, I kind of struggled with this for a little bit, just trying to get it correct. But I eventually got it and then it was time to glue. So I'm just gonna go around the edge with my hot glue and glue that wire right to the EVA foam. And do that for both panels. And then I'm gonna glue the EVA foam bit to the fabric bit. And this was kind of slow going, but it was definitely worth it. I think I went through mm, maybe about five glue sticks in total. So there's really not many materials involved in this project. Just press that all together so you make sure that you don't have any big gaps on the edges. One other thing I just did for my safety was just to put a little bit of that hot glue onto the ends of the wires. I just made little bulbs so I wouldn't end up accidentally cutting myself. It won't stay on forever, but that's okay. It's just to protect me for now. Alright, so with everything glued together, I can finally kind of bend out the shape of these ears, and we can actually kind of see Sucrose's ears coming to life here, instead of just being like diamond shapes. So I went through and bent them, and then it was time to shave. So I have a like pet razor. Um, if you don't own a pet razor, you could definitely use scissors. Before I had this, I used like hair scissors. It crepes, you could even use normal scissors, and I'm kind of doing that to clean up the edges here too, but the razor is just a lot faster. Sucrose has pretty big tufts of fur on the edges of her ears, and I'm just going through with my scissors and kind of recreating that. This is a little bit of my own stylistic preference, I think. Shave a little more. This part was so satisfying. And there you go, two shaved, fresh ears. Now it was just time to color them. Now I should preface this with, if you don't have an airbrush, that's totally fine. You could do this by hand too, but I do, so I'm gonna take advantage of that tool. I'm just gonna mix up the ear color a little bit, mix some of that white in there to get a little bit lighter, and then I'm gonna go over the surface of my ears just real lightly and kind of build up to a darker green. So I didn't show it, but I am using an airbrush thinner. I didn't just straight up put those paints in my airbrush, I promise. Yeah, uh, then it was just a matter of building up my different layers of green, and I started with the lightest one and kind of worked my way out from there. Just got a little bit of the edges. I'm gonna brush through that to pull it all the way through, make sure I'm doing okay. <laughs> So once I got that base coat of green down, then it was time to do a little bit of the darker buildup on the edges. I'm using that emerald color from before, and I ended up mixing a little bit of a darker blue in here as well, because I found that this didn't quite go as dark as I wanted it to. But with a little work around the edges, I was actually able to build up a pretty decent dark green. It took me a little while to kind of build up to the confidence to go that dark on these because I was really afraid that I was going to mess it up and then it would be super dark way earlier than it should be, but I think it actually came out really well in the end. You can see me getting progressively bolder here. Once I knew that that was the darkest green that I wanted, I really went for it and I think it actually came out really well. And that was really all I needed to do for the tops. You can see once I pull it up here, it's really starting to look like her ears and I was super excited to do the undersides after this. So with the tops done, it was time to do the undersides. And all I had to do was just spray a bit of pink on the very inside and it actually came together really quickly. Love Sucrose's cute watermelon ears, oh my gosh! And yeah, that was pretty much it for the painting. This was super fast and super fun. The only other thing that I really needed to do was to bend those wires around a headband. Um, but this project came together super quickly, just in an afternoon. And there they are! I, I am so just beyond happy. It actually worked out perfectly that I could just hide the headband under her hat. So it all sits together really well. One thing I really love about making my ears this way is that I can use the same headband for pretty much every pair that I make. 
So I'm just slipping sucroses on to this band here and they actually sit pretty well just because of the little spikes where it holds on to the hair. This was also the same headband that I used for my Shino ears. I made a quick Animal Crossing cosplay after the announcement and yeah, I love that I can take the ears on and off and it makes it way easier to store multiple pairs of ears. You can pretty much just take them off the headband and layer them like this and put them in a drawer or whatever. They store really well. So yeah, that's really all there is to it. This was a super fun afternoon project. And as far as spicing up a pre-bought cosplay goes, this is a really great way to do it. Without too much effort, you can really transform what you get. Thank you again for giving me your time today. I appreciate you being here. If you want to support the channel and have a second, if you could like this video or sub, that would mean a lot. Thank you again, and until next time, please take care.